Hey there, we're out in Waihewa and we're just about to meet with uh, John Ursua, former University of Hawaii receiver and a member of the Seattle Seahawks. So what's it like to be home? Um, man, it's, it's super nice after going through a full season um, and, you know, being on the, the, act, the roster and just for f completing a whole season where I could get comfortable and uh, kind of learn the, the ins and outs of the league. Yeah, so I mean, what'd you get to do over there? Um, you know, just it's like being in the league. Huh? Yeah, no, I just, you know, it was it's a dream come true for me, and so every day was just a blessing. Waking up, going to work, yeah, knowing that, you know, I only had to put on some sweats and a hoodie, yeah, and then go out to practice, w lift, and um, you know, this it's just it was super nice to just be a part of that and to um kind of take a step further to accomplish my dream. So, you're playing with guys who are little kids as heroes and everything, man. And I'm sure you're a lot of people's hero too, but you guys got to do a lot of fun things too, right? You said you had a horse contest? Yeah, um, I mean, we have some of arguably the greats, you know, Russell Wilson, um, yeah. you know, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf was a huge um, instrument that they, we brought along this past draft. Um, but yeah, there, there was always competition somewhere along, in, along the way in, in the facility or in the building because um, that's... Pete Carroll's motto. Yeah. And so... Well, Pete you know, can play basketball too, right? Yeah, Pete's a huge competitor. So my first game of horse was with Pete. <laughs> he, actually, he actually beat me. It's a, it's a little hoop that's in our indoor track. Um, and so he... We played pig. And, um, you know, he can't, he can't really shoot outside the free throw line. So I, I stayed away from the threes. Um, but, yeah, he actually beat me. and then But we would always play so with the – Did you take it easy on him? Like, could you hit no, some threes? No, because I wanted to compete too. Yeah. But, uh -huh. like, if I were to shoot some threes, I don't think he had the range like that. Okay. So I, was, I kind of stayed in his facility mm -hmm. where I seen him knocking down shots. And um, But, yeah, no, we always played. Um, and then the receivers started this tradition where we would play, you know, these one-on-one -on -one games – Right inside, after practice was done, just kind of light, no jumping, like just kind of pull-ups or layups, and it kind of got way too intense where Pete kind of, he gave us the nudge like, hey, we're shutting this down, and so um, it was it was fun, but we're always playing around and competing. Who's the best basketball player besides you? Oh. Uh, well, who's good out there? So I, I haven't seen him play. We haven't, I haven't played with all of them. I played with the rookies like okay. live where we went five on five um, in, in a L.A. fitness. But um, I, supposedly I've heard Bobby Wagner's pretty good. Um, I heard you mean Bobby Wagner Tyler guy can Lockett. jump over players? <laughs> yeah, I, I heard wow. they're, they're just hoopers, Tyler Lockett. And then I, I played with Russ a little bit, and so they're pretty good as well. Thank you. Plus Bobby Wagner's a, an old uh, Mountain West whack player. So Ex exactly, yeah. Same so, background. Uh, yeah, it was, just, it was cool knowing that he came out of the same conference. Okay. Yeah. And what do you guys do all day? I mean, uh, what's what's it like when you first get up to like um, practice day? Yeah, well, we always start off the day with our team meetings, you know, we get in. It's, it's not like college, you know, you're not getting in. Mm -hmm. Well, I know around it's different everywhere, but at, at UH at least we got up, you know, 6.30, 6 o'clock. But in the league, you know, you're waking up around 8, you know, getting to a team meeting, 8.30, you know, hit the weight room. And, you know, you start breaking down opponents if you're in season. And um, then you get to practice from there. You have a walkthrough practice a lunch then a, a, the real practice and then you watch the practice break down everything so you just you're just in the mo the mood of just breaking everything down and getting better what was um russ wilson like oh uh, russ is the man i mean he's he's a great leader just a great guy very composed always positive um make sure he, he know he, he knows he's always letting people know that he's there for you and um you know he wants the best for you and so He's a huge competitor, um, just always wants to win. And so just being around a leader like that was just such a huge step for me because, you know, it's my first year. Yeah. And having somebody like that to kind of mold my path um, was huge for me. Okay, so you um, not just play football, but you play football games too, right? What's that like playing Madden? And, <laughs> yeah, and who Madden, are you in Madden? Madden, uh, sure, I, I do a little fantasy draft always. I yeah. do this. 
this uh, you can pick a team, then you get to draft, so everybody becomes available. Yeah, from every every player, and so you draft who you want. Uh, but I always make sure I draft myself. I got to pick yeah. myself up out of free agency all the time because I'm not really on the top 100 on uh-huh. receivers. But um, you know, it's fun. I always just pick a random team, and then I just pick pick my favorite players, um, and then I pick myself up off, off the uh, free agency. Kind of boot my stats a little bit, and then start my guy, and just have fun playing that. Yeah, what position are you? Are you more inside, outside? Um, I move him into the slot, but I move him outside too, so I make him the number one receiver. So he's always mm-hmm. in the game. But um, and yeah, you can I, also be a quarterback because you start a game of quarterback. <laughs> <for> you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I, I would have you know loved to kind of play with that, but no, I always put in a wildcat uh, formation on the Madden, okay. so. I get to play quarterback a little bit here and there. Wow, that's fun. Then. And how, what's the name of your team? Oh, you shoot. I, no, you just pick a regular team, but I don't oh. know. I pick the Seahawks or, you know, whatever team. So, Did anybody ever call you up and say you're on their fantasy team? or? Oh, yeah. I, was, I mean, all my closest friends, always yeah. they all picked me up this past season. Um, I told them not to put me in. Yeah. I said, I'll let you know if you should put me in or not. And so, um, you know, Unfortunately, this year wasn't my year, um, but, you know, hopefully the next year they'll, they'll pick me up again. Yeah, so what was it like when they activated you? Oh, uh, so I was activated for about five games this season. Yeah. Um, you know, the first, like, two, when it was the first, yeah, so the first one it was week two versus the Steelers. Then it wasn't again till about, like, week 13 versus the Carolina Panthers. And then the Niners game was the third one. And, you know, that's when I actually had a, my catch, my first NFL catch. And yeah. uh, got to experience a lot more playing time because all those other ones I didn't actually yeah. go in. I just, you know, we just, the situation or my uh, formation wasn't called. And so um, actually getting that Niners one where it was the championship game. It was fourth and ten, yeah. um, you know, going in and everything's on the line. And um, have, having to make a play and having that catch was just huge for me. And um, I, it was just fun to ha- finally have that under my belt and um, just kind of get my feet wet. What did you do with the ball? Did they let you keep the ball? No, I kept my jersey, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, I didn't, it was kind of bittersweet. I didn't really want to keep the ball because yeah. I didn't end up scoring, um, which, which I was kind of disappointed about. You know, I was an inch out and yeah. kind of just – you know, stumbled over and um, but no, I would have loved to keep the ball, but I wanted to score, so I just kept my jersey and um, kind of just ran with it from there. Wow, yeah, big time playoff. I mean, that's exciting, right? I mean, big game or yeah, no, that was. I mean, in in pers- a great perspective of things, yeah, it was a, it was a big play. You know, it was yeah. fourth and ten, and it's our you know. Conference rivals, in a yeah. way you can say, in a championship game, and so, yeah. you know, I just had to step up and make a play, and I, w- I wasn't, you know, nervous or nothing. I was just excited to get in and kind of see what I could do. And sure enough, the ball came my way. You know, got the first down. It was first and one, and and the rest was history. You know. Wow. Yeah. Great catch, great play, huh? Yeah, it was it was not bad. You know, like I said, it was bittersweet. I should have stayed up and scored or tried to stretch my, you know, stretch the ball out into the end zone. But it was a great play overall, you know, just giving my team a chance. Oh, so um, what was the hardest thing when you got into the league? Was people trying to pronounce your name? Oh, yeah. We, we struggled multiple days, just weeks, months with uh-huh. Ursula, Ursula. Like, it was just like. It was a it was a struggle and I, I you know I told everyone Ur- Ursula just, like the Little Mermaid <laughs> yeah like it was just so it was a struggle and so I was just like you know just keep it simple I like, call me Ju uh-huh. and um, but everybody had their nicknames for me people were calling me Urs they uh-huh. start they shortened it called me Urs um, some guys are calling me Ju um, yeah it was just like there was a couple other ones where I was just like man I never even heard that one but yeah it was. It was a struggle with the last name, so I, everyone just calls me Ju now. So, just go by Ju. So that was the dream part you got to live. What was it like dreaming the dream when you're when you're a young kid, and you said you grew up on um, Big Island, yeah, a little corner Hawaii, yeah. yeah, and you didn't you didn't have much then, right? Yeah, yeah. 
What, uh, what was it like uh, living, growing up there? Yeah, I mean, so just growing up, you know, in Hawaiian homes where, yeah. you know, you have to have that Hawaiian heritage to be yeah. able to stay there. And, um, you know, I have a big family of five. Um, I'm the youngest. And so no, not growing up with much, you know, um, just, you know, our parents doing what they can to yeah. make by and uh, make sure we're, we have food on the, our table. And yeah. so, you know, being able to see the dream at such a, such a young age was only available because of um, how well my parents and my brother, my yeah. brothers and sisters paved the way for me. You know, I always saw, seen how hard my parents worked, regardless that we didn't have much. They always made sure we had food on our table and we were taken care of health wise. And um, and then also seeing my brothers, you know, pursue their love of the yeah. game of basketball, football, whatever it was. Um, like I said, being the youngest, I seen all these things, and I said, "Man, I want I want to be like that, and I want to I want to work hard to accomplish something so great." And so, you know, just I always had that in my mind. It was just being the best at what I do, and so it wasn't. I, I'm I love basketball. Basketball is my first love. So, yeah. um, I always wanted to make it to the NBA, and that was that was what I wanted to do, and that's what I had my mind set on until. You know, kind of later in high school where I started kind of getting offers for football as well. Yeah. And um, that's when I said, you know what, it doesn't matter which one I do. It's just I want to be the best at it. And so that's what I uh, strive to do every day. And um, and that's kind of what, what led me to my, my journey to, um, you know, I served my mission. I came back, played for University of Hawaii for three seasons um, and then got my my chance. And so... That's all I needed, you know. Every step, every journey, I just needed an opportunity to play and show what I could do, and so that was the biggest part. And um, I just enjoyed it every ride of the, every step of the way. I just enjoyed it, made sure I had fun, and I was working hard. Well, um, going on missions not easy. Yeah, and you got to raise a lot of money on your own before that, and mm -hmm. what kind of jobs were you doing just or anything just trying uh, to get some so, money? So yeah. I, I sat out or well, after I graduated high school yeah. I worked for eight months straight where I was doing landscaping and um, you know it was from mowing lawns to to putting down you know gr gravel in somebody's house or putting in grass or removing sprinklers or something like that and that was, it was about up in Utah or here yeah this was in Utah so and, um, the weather gets a little harsh too <laughs> yeah the weather was you know never a helping factor yeah. sometimes it was a little chilly but um you know, uh, you, you got to do what you got to do to fundraise for your mission. And um, so I knew the sacrifice I had to make. and But I knew it was it was what I wanted to do. I always wanted to serve my mission. And um, going out to Paris, I got called to Paris, France. It taught me so much about myself, you know, how to take care of myself, how to be responsible, how to, um, you know, care about other people and how to serve them. And so... That's that was the biggest thing about my mission was just making sure I learned my these attributes and made sure I brought them back with me because I knew I was going to come back to college and start late. I you know normally kids are starting yeah. at eighteen, nineteen. I came back at twenty one at my freshman year, and so it it, it it was a blessing. But you know it was also starting late. But you know it all worked out for the best. Well, um, because you had um, committed so early, mm -hmm. what was it like? Uh, you know, were you kind of worried, like, did they forget about me? Or, you know, because outside of mine, you were off the radar for about three years. Yeah. Um, well, luckily, the biggest blessing, right, was that Norm Chow was also a member. Yeah. So he kind of understood the the mission part of it. So he actually, I, you know, I signed with Hawaii. I go then go on my mission, but he stayed in contact with me. He would email me every once in a while, see how I was doing. And so that was the best part, right? So um, coming back, I wasn't like, man, what's what's going on? What's my path? What, where I'm gonna have to go? It, it was kind of like I was still just so in tune because Norm made it that way. Yeah. And so when I came home off my mission, Norm Norm's offer still stand, but you know, Oregon State came knocking, BYU came knocking, and so I had options, and I was yeah. like, what do I do? And um, but sure enough, you know, I. I felt best going, coming back home, playing for my state, and yeah. also Norm Chow just did a great job of staying in contact with me, and so I felt like I was, I had an obligation to come back and play for Hawaii. 
So when you're on your mission, um, they give you, what, maybe an hour in the morning to kind of work out on your own? Yeah, you get a roughly a 30, 45 minutes, but it has to be from 6.30 to 7.30. So where do you work out in um, Paris without, a, I, don't, I don't imagine there are many footballs around there. No, not at all. There's, I mean, soccer balls flying around everywhere, but, um, you know, you, we couldn't, we weren't allowed to go to gyms. So it had to be just free weights or body weight or like, you, just, you know, just like running, sit-ups, push-ups. Um, so we, what me and my companion would do, we would get up and run two miles every day. Um, I, it varied every once in a while, you know, like in the middle of my mission, towards the end of my mission, I kind of slowed down with the yeah. running and I kind of started doing a little bit more push-ups just to kind of get my, my muscles, you know, staying intact. But um, yeah, I just did whatever I could around the apartment. I will just pick up pick up heavy things in my apartment try to curl it or you know we didn't have free weights laying uh-huh. around and so whatever we had i just kind of used in like shoulders or anything like i just used that little window 6 30 to 7 to just kind of wow get a little sweat break so well wow, a- but you like to lift weights uh, or you Kind of freakishly strong, aren't you? Yeah, I'm. Uh, when I'm did a, the combine? What'd you do? Again? Uh, I did 17 for 17? 225. That's, but wow, I, I'm a gym rat, so like, you know. But that wasn't my main focus on my mission. Obviously, my mission yeah. was to serve others and bring others to Christ. And so, you know, you know, it was tough because like, as much as a, a gym rat I am, I yeah. couldn't really focus on doing that because I knew my calling was something else. But um, yeah, I. I'm always in the gym. I'm working out two, three times a day. Yeah. I love pushing weight. Like, you know, my dad was a bodybuilder, so I always seeing pictures of him and seeing how strong he was. I, I kind of got to compete with him. I yeah. got to compete with my two older brothers who, every time I live with them, they're always telling me, oh, I'm still stronger than you. And so I just, I always got somebody pushing me. Wow. That's pretty incredible then. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so um, you're experience in Paris you made friends and everything and but you have to learn another language you're a guy who went to Hawaiian immersion school yep and then all of a sudden now you've got to learn another language and, yep yeah and so, in a very short time too exactly yeah exactly so you know I grew up speaking Hawaiian um, yeah I went to Hawaiian immersion from kindergarten to eighth grade so I was speaking Hawaiian all throughout school um and then yeah you get call, I get called to Paris, France, and yeah. now I got to teach people in French, and so not know having any French history background of the language, um, you know, I have to kind of pick it up pretty quick, and so you know I picked it up as quick as I could, and you know within three four months I'm speaking, I'm able to get by, and I can understand pretty well. You know by six eight months I'm understanding almost everything okay and then to like a a year a year year and a quarter i'm speaking just like fluently just kind of getting by everything i need to and then that whole last six months of my mission you're you should feel comfortable and uh speaking understanding you know knowing your message so yeah it was just it was great you know now it gets but now i have those tools in my Uh box you know i speak hawaiian i speak french speak pigeon you know whatever it is so um, it's just nice to have. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So for a guy who um, didn't have a lot of things growing up, um, you finally get some paychecks. Mm-hmm. What would you buy yourself? Um, surprisingly, I didn't spend any money on myself, but I did. Um, as soon as I had enough money where I was a little comfortable, yeah. I, I bought my mom a house in Utah. Wow. And so um, I got her a nice a nice place out there in uh, Lehigh. And, um, you know, I didn't, didn't get, like I said, I didn't get myself a house, a car, nothing, you know, because still early in my career, I don't, yeah. you never know what could happen. Yeah. And so, you know, I stayed away from big purchases. I just bought my mom a house because I always wanted to do that. And so that was a great blessing for me. Did she know you were buying it or was it a surprise? Um, it was a surprise, but at the same time, I, I let them, uh, I let her pick out the house. So, okay. You know, I, yeah, I told her to stay in a reasonable budget, but, yeah. um, you know, she, she did a good job. She picked out a nice house. I went and saw, seen it um, right when season was done. I went and visited the house and um so it was a great it was a great blessing like i said and it was just a huge um you know huge relief just not knowing my mom doesn't have to move yeah. around and live with my siblings she could just have her own spot so how did you break it to her um you know i just 
I told I set up some visits yeah. um, in the, in an area. I I kind of you know months prior I asked uh-huh. her, hey, where where would you want to live? And she kind of gave me some ideas. So I called up some places where she could visit. So I just told her, just hey, go check out these places. Mm-hmm. She's like, okay. So you know they're brand new spots and um, nice nice homes. And so that's kind of how I did it. I, and then I l- let her choose what, whatever one she wanted. And so. Um, you know, it wasn't much of a surprise, but it was yeah. just, you know, it wasn't one of those, I got to make it go viral or something. It yeah. was just something I wanted to do for her and I got it done. So it was nice. Well, because she's done so much for you. What kind of sacrifices did you make for you? Do you remember the Pl- biggest Plenty. Ones? I mean, you know, with, with my whole parents going through divorce and yeah. her being a single parent of, um, you know, the, th- us, the three youngest. Um, we were still all in high school, and um, she was taking care of us, making sure we had nothing. And we were trying to, we were living in my sister's house. Yeah. And my sister has three kids at the time, and uh, she's, you know, she's newly married. My sister, and um, now she's having to take care of my mom, my three, uh, the three younger siblings, and we were bouncing house to house, and um, you know, just trying to make ends meet. And um, I ended up living with my friends when I moved to Utah because mm-hmm. I seen the struggle and how much, you know, I was just trying to take off a burden off my mom. And so, you know, all she's done, you know, she's always had two or three jobs. She's yeah. always, you know, taking overtime to make sure we're eating and make sure we're, you know, we're well taken care of. And so it was the least I could do, and so um, I was just so grateful to get it, being able to get her that house in December. So you must have really appreciated the value of a UH scholarship. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, that was that and was and the huge. breakfasts and everything yeah. that comes with it. And yeah, the, I, I I told her. I mean, I I wasn't gonna go to a school unless I had a full ride scholarship, yeah. and and that was the reality of it, you know, and. Um, it's scary because, you know, I'm not in control of who offers yeah. me a full ride. But um, I, I promised her, you know, I'm going to get that done so that she doesn't have to worry about taking care of not, no payments, you know. Mm-hmm. And so um, it was just a huge, another huge blessing, you know, just getting that, then getting that full ride scholarship, getting meals taken care of, you know, my education and so much more, you know. And so it, it was just a huge uh, blessing. Uh, a huge accomplishment and everything. So I just want to know, how do you stay healthy and fit? Um, yeah, so the biggest thing for me is just, um, you know, taking care of my body so that I can have a long-lasting career. But, um, you know, I, I've i slowly seen the value and the importance of you know, making sure my body's always taken care of. So, you know, it's it's my full body massages that I, I get maybe once or twice a week. Um, you know, I have some machines where, you know, I kind of just activating my muscles. Um, and then, you know, just staying tuned with like stretching. So I, I you know, I sign up for like a yoga class um, and then just getting, you know, just making sure you're, you're staying flexible, you know, you're stretching and then deep, deep breathe, deep breath breathing you know for like 30 seconds you know where you just you know you just what is that? Can you show us what that's like what's it like you know you just you like you take you inhale a big breath you know yeah. you hold it and then you really but you focus on bring, breathing in from your from your like core area instead of from your chest so you're breathing in and, you, and then you just hold and then you do that for about like five ten minutes where you where you can lay flat on your back and so but it's just you know, it's bringing in that oxygen and it's, ma- it's clearing up your mind and everything. So, you know, I just always try to do, and then the cold and hot tub, obviously, that's, you know, just some bread and butter, easy stuff you can do. But, you know, just making sure you take care of your body is the biggest thing. Is there a routine when you do the cold and hot or what's... Uh... Yeah, I do contrast. So, like, I do, like, five minutes in the cold, five in the hot, five five in the cold, five in the hot. But it depends the day, too. If I did a lot of heavy lifting, I'm just going to go in the cold tub probably and kind of recover my muscles um you know but if i'm getting ready to go lift or go run and do my feet work drill then i'll just get in the hot tub you know to loosen up a little bit and get my muscles going so you know it just depends but normally i do some contrast just back and forth is there any food or anything you just try to either eat or try to avoid yeah well i started my my meal prep like two weeks ago it didn't last very long i 
I'm trying to put on weight and my meal prep was like almost making me lose weight and so I was just like you know I just got to keep eating a lot where I get full and where I'm can because my metabolism is so quick and I'm burning all of this so fast with my workouts and people, so people hate you for that you know <laughs> oh yeah I, I know everyone's like oh I wish I had that yeah. but for me I'm like man I wish I could gain some weight like I've been at 185 for like the past four years and I want to get to 190 and so it's been super hard like I can't gain five pounds like it's crazy to think but it's it's real life like, I can't do it and so um well, at least I haven't done it yet. And so, yeah, it's just been tough. Like, I've been wanting to eat right, but at the same time, I'm just kind of, like, picking around and eating till I get full because I'm trying to put on some, some weight. Okay. All right, John. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us on our first podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Steven. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more content, subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment and just tell us who else you'd like us to interview.